I have been accused of being a Pharisee. I've been called a Pharisee, not because of any particular sin or being a sticker to some sort of rules or being legalistic. No, because I've decided to hold myself accountable as, as much as I can to the scriptures. As a matter of fact, many of you may have been called a Pharisee by someone who doesn't seem to be holding tight to the scripture. And so they'll say, because you are leaning too much on the scriptures, they'll call you a Pharisee. The problem is though, they don't, those that do so, they don't know really what a Pharisee is. I mean, think about it. Does it make sense that Jesus, who says, this is Jesus, when being tempted by Satan, he says that man shall not live by bread alone, but what? But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so if the scriptures are that important, so much so that the word of God is what we ought to live by, why would anyone think that Pharisees we're doing the same thing. They equate, for some reason, they equate Pharisees as someone who kept the word. The fact of the matter is that is not the case at all. Now, before we look at some more scriptures, I want to go to something over here in Lagos. I want to pull something up and I want to pull up every time that Jesus actually spoke to the Pharisees. What you're going to find out over here is that not once, and I mean not once, do we ever find Jesus ever stating to the Pharisees that they were knowledgeable. As a matter of fact, what Jesus got on them for was the fact that they did not know the word. They did not adhere to the scriptures. However, what they did adhere to were their own traditions. And so what I did was I put up all the different times, about 15, 16 separate times where Jesus spoke to the Pharisees that we have recorded here. And one is Matthew 9, 9 through 13. And notice, let's just read it. It says, Jesus went from there. He saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth and he said to him, follow me. Then it happened when Jesus was reclining at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were dining with Jesus. Now here come the Pharisees. When the Pharisees saw this, they said, why is your teacher eating with tax collectors? And Jesus said, Jesus heard this and he said, not, it is not those who are healthy who have need of physician, but those who are sick. Now look what he says to them. He says, but go and learn what this means. Well, the reason why he would say that is because they don't know very much of now. He, and by the way, he's quoting an Old Testament passage. Then we go to Matthew 12, 7. He says, at that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath and his disciples became hungry and began to pick the heads of grain to eat. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, have you not read what David did when he became hungry. And so again, here's another example of them not knowing the scriptures, but what they have done is they have supplanted their own reasoning and understandings and their traditions to take place of what the scriptures say. In Matthew 15, 1, the, uh, the Pharisees came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, why do your disciples, look what it says, break the tradition of elders, for they do not wash their hands when they eat their bread. He asked, why do you, you why do you yourselves transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? In other words, the word of God, the commandments that we have written, you set those aside for the way you want to do things as though those are the more important things. And so every time that we come across as we see Jesus speaking with them, we see Jesus admonishing them for not knowing the scriptures. So today, when someone says, because you read the text and you hold to the text, you want to have some fidelity, some loyalty to the scriptures, someone who clearly doesn't know the scriptures or have any loyalty or fidelity to them will turn around and call you a Pharisee. The irony to say that you who hold to the scriptures are what Pharisees are, though Pharisees did not hold to the scriptures. They don't realize they should be embarrassed if they understood what they were saying. Again, Jesus is about the word of God. As a matter of fact, one of the best Pharisees that you can find, that would be someone named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is having a conversation with Jesus. And Jesus goes on later as he's speaking and telling him that you have to be born from above. Jesus is amazed at the fact that this person is a teacher of the law, a teacher of Israel. And he doesn't know this. And so when Nicodemus is confused in John chapter three, he says, verse nine, how can these things be? Verse 10, look what Jesus says. He says, are you the teacher of Israel and you don't understand these things? Well, why should he understand these things? Because they've been written in the scriptures and Nicodemus was not paying attention. Why? Because he had gotten involved with this group of people who all they do 
would supplant the word of God for their traditions and use and treat their traditions or their customs or the way they do things as though that was the word of God. Remember, Jesus is having conversations. He says, you have heard it read or you've heard it said because he's reminding them of the scriptures. But they're asking Jesus, why then did Moses this? Why then did Moses give a bill of receipt? Things like that, because they simply did not know the scriptures. And for some reason, because people are also biblically illiterate, they don't know that when the Bible speaks about Pharisees, the Bible never gives them that sort of a claim to say that they know the scriptures. As a matter of fact, Titus 2, Paul says that what we should do is speak the things which are fitting of sound doctrine or teach or speak the things which accord to sound doctrine, which is sound teaching. Where do we get those things from? The sound doctrine, sound teaching from the word of God. And so going back to this account in Mark 7, Jesus is having this conversation in verse 5. He says, that the, I'm sorry, the Pharisees asked, uh, why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with impure hands? And he said, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honor me with their lips, which we see a lot of Christians do so, but their heart is far away. How do we know so well? If your heart is far away from the word of God, then your heart is far away from God. He says, but in vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. In other words, what they teach is sound doctrine is really the precepts of teachings of men, which we see that today. We'll see people say things like, you need to try the spirit by the spirit. No, you don't, because that's not what the scriptures say. We'll see people who will hold up these maybe apparent moves of the spirit or what they think is something spiritual happen, but it goes counter to the Bible and they'll accuse you of being in the wrong because you're holding too fast to the text. But wait a second, shouldn't we use the text to determine if what we're seeing is absolute correct, if it's right, if it's true? But if you do, then someone will say or try to label you as a Pharisee. Going back to the text, he says, neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. He was also saying to them, you are experts at setting aside the commandments of God in order to keep your tradition. So in other words, you would love to move inside the scriptures as though the scriptures were not given to us by the Holy Spirit. But you'll go back and act as though the Holy Spirit is your guide. That cannot be. The Holy Spirit cannot be your guide if you're not going by the very words that the Holy Spirit gave us. Remember, Paul says all scriptures are inspired. God breathed. Peter says that there's been no prophecy. All prophecy, including what we have through these scriptures, have been given by a movement of God as the Holy Spirit moved men. And so to neglect these things, that is what a Pharisee would do. And so the irony is they call you or me a Pharisee for listening and going by the scriptures when truth be told, they are the Pharisees because what did Pharisees do? Set aside the teachings, the word of God for the way they wanted to do things. Isn't that interesting?